he's extremely grateful. So here we are after Thanksgiving, right, in this in-between season. Did you know that there were 46 million turkeys prepared this Thanksgiving? And about 12% of Americans don't even eat turkey. Is that amazing? It's a lot of turkey. 50 million pumpkin pies were consumed on Thanksgiving. <laughs> that is so much pumpkin. I remember I, I told uh, my husband's father, or we were there for Thanksgiving, and I, everybody's eating pumpkin pie but me. And I said, oh, I never acquired a taste for pumpkin, really. He said, what do you mean? Everybody's born with a taste for pumpkin. <laughs> I always thought it was more like a, a vegetable, and, and I don't mind eating it as such, but uh, as pie, I, I never did see it myself, but uh, I guess I'm alone in that thought. Yeah, yes, we can all attest to that, huh? And ah, the pungent aroma of sage at this time of year, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful, all the dressing and just the smell of it? Did you ever wonder why we put sage in our dressing or stuffing? There's a reason for it. We understand that it is an antibacterial herb. Did you know that? Our ancestors also knew that to ensure food safety, it was best to add an abundance of sage to the stuffing and to rub the bird inside and out with salt before stuffing it. They knew all that. And scientific studies can now help us understand why many of our classic flavor, flavor combinations <laughs> seem so perfect and it's because they demonstrate that our ancestors knew a great deal about preserving food, food quality and health. And that's what many of these flavors, it's why they go together and we just, they're synonymous with uh, good, goodness, health and wholeness. And uh, some of this led to the old adage that uh, the cook is half a phys physician and this is true. There is some lost art to that. And sage is also synonymous with wisdom. We know that. In fact, it might be said that many an old sage gained her wisdom from the use of sage. <laughs> as far back as 1597, herbalist John uh, Gerard wrote that sage was singularly good for the head and brain and quickeneth the nerves and memory. And the Latin name for sage is salvia, salvia, which translates to life. So remember that the next time you're eating that dressing with all that sage in it. <laughs> Wisdom. So I was changing it up just a little bit this holiday, this holy season. We have traditionally, uh, with the unity tradition, gone along with the Advent season. And today the talk would normally be hope and faith. But I decided to uh, change it up just a little bit this holiday season. After the harvest, the time between is how we're going to treat this. This time between now and the winter solstice. We find ourselves in a time as the in-between time. And I want you to think about it that way. It's a time where we've enjoyed the harvest. We're turning inward toward the time of rest, restoration, and renewal. With the waning of the light, moving toward the winter solstice, marks the day when the earth's tilt is furthest from the sun. 
Many cultures and religions around the world don't see it as the end of something. Instead, they honor it as the beginning. As our transition from dark to light, a rebirth that moves us toward new beginnings and reawakenings of nature. Traditionally, we've seen the winter solstice as the start of winter. And of course, this dates back to ancient times when people literally lived by the sun, relying on the food, light, warmth, and timekeeping. So this was very important to them and to us. And I want to use this as a theme during this holy season, this time between when we are becoming, we're changing, we're transitioning, and hopefully renewing the spirit within us to be all that we can be. We were given many capacities when we came upon this earth. We hope to use all of it in our time here, in this sacred time. So us, this final harvest is gathering, learning the lessons and talking, taking what we need from them, all the lessons, keeping what is useful and leaving the rest in the heap of compost. Can you do that? Can you take what's happened to you and decide you don't need to carry it with you any longer and consider it to be good fertilizer, good compost? And if there are people involved with that, wish them well and pray for their best. Okay? So what do we want to take with us that will nourish us into this next phase of our growth as we prepare for spring? Winter is not a dead season, far from it. Many plants use this time to spread their underground roots, create energy for the next growing season. And if you're a gardener, You know that the bulb plants we enjoy in the spring, like the tulips and the daffodils, form their flowers in the cold winter months. In between a completion and the initiation of a new cycle, project or part of yourself, we're going to take a time out rest, reverence, reflection are highly recommended. The universe has already provided with it a a time out, hasn't it? (laughs) Most of the year of 2020 and all of 2021, we've had a time out You remember all the hype at different times when the world was going to come to an end. This was the date, and then the next date was going to be 2012, and we just didn't know what was going to happen. And I just had a kind of a knowing in myself. I was going to get up the next morning and be myself, hopefully a better self, but the world was pretty much going to be the same. We never could have written the script that has been provided for us in this time of going within with this world pandemic. We never could have guessed what it would do. And look at the benefits it's given. It's given each of us a time to go within and decide what we truly do enjoy doing. Maybe the groups you want to be a part of, the people you want to be with. It gave us a time to rest and restore and renew. In addition, look what it did for the earth. Without all the airplanes, all the cars, 
everything moving, the earth got a rest too. Now, there are many people that will say this had been predicted for eons of time, and perhaps it had, but we just did not know the method with which it would come. But it did. And I suspect years from now, maybe sooner than that, we'll be able to see all the benefits that were had during this time out. So today, as I said earlier, we're entering the holy season, this time of reflection, restoration, and do-overs. Do we really get do-overs in life? <laughs> I think we do. If we'll forgive ourselves, let it go, we do. We can get a do-over. Just like in golf, there's a mulligan. Anybody familiar with that? <laughs> yes, Charles, you use the mulligan often, do you? Okay, all right, whoever you're with, okay. We get a do-over, even if your entire life you feel that you've gone down wrong paths many, many, many times. You get a do-over. You do, didn't go down a wrong path, though. Whatever path you've gone down, it brought you here today. <laughs> but that's another subject, and I'm going to take that on another time. A mulligan is a second chance to perform an action. Usually after the first chance went wrong through bad luck, maybe a blunder. Its best known meaning, uh, as I said, is in golf, where a player is informally allowed by his or her own grace <laughs> and the other players to replay a, st a stroke, even though it's against the formal rules of golf. How about that? I like that, a mulligan. It must have been named for someone. That had to have been someone's name that routinely did that practice. <laughs> so let's use this season, this holy season, to reflect and restore to be the highest version of ourselves that we can be. We'll wipe the slate clean of all that's gone before. And I would invite you to, to look at those things that trigger you. What typically happens when something triggers us is we immediately react and jump on the other person, whatever it was that triggered us. But you know what? Here's the beauty of that. You would not have been triggered if there wasn't something in you that spoke to that. So the next time you're triggered and you want to blame another, go into the bathroom and look in the mirror and ask the question, what was triggered in me that I reacted that way? Some of the best advice you'll get. <laughs> So in this in-between time, this in-between, the harvest, let's use this season. Let's use it well. Let's observe, prepare, turning over the soil of our own thoughts. Are you willing to do that? because sometimes our thoughts are just plain holding us back. So you're willing to turn over those thoughts as a farmer would turn over the soil? Be careful of the fertilizer you use. 
always. What do you want your life to look like? January the 1st, 2022. What do you want your life to look like? What do you want to feel? Who do you want to be? Hold that in your mind. What traits do you believe that you need in order to become that person? Are there some traits you feel that you're missing? Maybe some superpowers? <laughs> Maybe you need more strength. I know sometimes I do. Courage? What about grace? Compassion, understanding, patience, awareness. Many times we need resilience. Perhaps I could be more tender. I need a bit more creativity, determination. Boldness, wisdom. We can awaken these traits. We can. And if you feel that you need them, then you need to look at that as your superpower. And one way to invite that in is to uh, invite, you know, if you have a, a vision, I don't know, maybe it's Arnold Schwarzenegger or something that has courage or strength and hold him in your mind. I don't know, someone that's graceful. Whatever it is that works for you, I want you to, during your meditation time, during this time of transformation, rethink those things. What would my life look like? if I had enough courage, if I had enough faith, hope, determination. I would recommend that you make a list of your top 10 traits for moving you through your life and work toward that. Think upon it, reflect upon it, meditate on it. And I'll bet you within a few days, no, I guarantee you, within a few days, you're going to see it coming forth into your life. You're going to see the change. I read a book at one time, and I, I looked it up recently by Valerie Burton, Where Will I Go From Here? She mentions five commitments when you're in a transition time. She said she was in a, just the most horrible time of her life, going through so much pain and agony. Her uh, marriage was ending. She didn't want it to. She still loved him. She wanted him to come back. She felt incomplete. She felt like she could not make it on her own. She was brought to her knees, hardly even able to make it from one breath to the next. This one day she called her mother, and she really wanted consolation, but what she got was a bit of advice. <laughs> it surprised her because her mother was so kind and loving and always there with a listening ear. But she told her to get her clothes on, get dressed, comb her hair, and go outside for a walk. She said, you walk until you feel better. Then when you come back, I want you to write this down every single day. I will not feel sorry for myself, is what her mother told her. Wasn't what she was expecting. 
<laughs> she thought she was expecting some real sympathy here, you know. <laughs> I'm in pain. I need you to be sympathetic with me, Mom. You're giving me this hard advice. And when I think back on it, it reminds me of the saying, just pull up your big girl panties and move on, honey. And that's some good advice, too. And we all need it at different times. Or it could be, pull up your big boy shorts and move on. So y'all say it with me now, right now, whichever applies to you. I'm going to pull up my big girl panties and I'm going to move on. Sometimes you need that more than anything else. So, back to this advice from Valerie Burton. Commitments. I will not feel sorry for myself. I will not stare at a closed door. How about that? The door's closed. Let it stay there. I will dig deeply to unearth all the courage I need it is there. I came into this world with it, and somehow conditioning has made me forget who I am. I will direct my thoughts. My thoughts will not direct me. And I will choose to believe that all things work together for good. I'm going to believe these things. I'm going to choose to watch my thoughts. I'm going to choose to use this in-between time, this time out, my mulligan, my do-over, to embrace all the gifts that God, this earth, this universe have in store for me. I just pray that we will use this holy season to its best. I just pray that you will see the sacred in every one that you meet and in every situation. And I just thank you for being here today to share this time with each of us together as we come back together again in community.